This is Ari with Talking Technique, episode 72. I have another chromatic challenge for you today. These have always been very popular on Talking Technique. You can check out the No Treble post for a few Talking Techniques that feature chromatic challenges. Chromaticism means half steps. The chromatic scale, that's a good way to finger it, right? Uh, one half step after another. If you play it up a string, it's very obvious, but if you want to not do all these shifts, you just play one note after the other, one finger per fret, and whenever you run out of fingers, you just shift down by one fret. There are several fingerings how to do that scale. Uh, in this book, ex actually, I describe a few of them, so check it out. Music theory for the bass player. And this is just one of the many, many options, but this is a good one. And chromatics add color to a groove. So if you want to liven up a groove using chromatics, think about it this way. There's the diatonic notes. Those are all the notes that are part of the chord. In our example, it's F minor. So everything that's out of F minor is going to sound inside. Now, oftentimes, funky grooves are in Dorian. Dorian is the same as Aeolian, just one note different instead of D flat. In Aeolian, it's D in Dorian. Uh, it sounds a bit brighter, and that D is often adding a little pleasant zing to it. So oftentimes you see minor grooves in minor that they use Dorian. Everything out of Do F Dorian or F Aeolian, you decide is diatonic. Everything not out of that is chromatic. Those are the notes in between. To add a little spice to this groove, this one is in seven. Quarter note in this groove is set to 95. And that means that you can't count out a whole bar of quarter notes because it's a seven, eight. So you are essentially having three and a half quarter notes. There's actually utility in counting it that way. And I'll tell you that in a second, but check this out. You can just double this 95 times two, 190, and put it at 190. And now you're counting the quarter of uh, the eighth note, right? So here is 190 and now you've got five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. eight can be grouped many different ways. The best way to think about this one is like this. So there is a short taka before it goes back to the beginning. Now what you want to do likely is go da taka 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 but that makes it a four four right so it's a seven eight so you gotta clip off that last eighth uh eighth note there in the bar da taka 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 da taka 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 da taka 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 da right And so here's a trick when you want to start counting quarter notes. How do you 
do that because the metronome can't go. The metronome is just gonna go even, right? So what I like doing is I like setting it to the actual quarter note tempo and let every other bar coincide with the downbeat on the top and every other bar in between, let the upbeat eighth note coincide with the beat. Now that may sound like, whoa, that must be disorienting. It actually isn't. Five, six, seven. As you were seeing, I was trying to mark out with my body the bars where the downbeat is and the bars where the upbeat coincides with the metronome. I'll slow this down a little bit. Five, six, seven. Up. Down. So it switches every other bar. And you might feel that you actually like that. It, it just feels like you fall into this rhythm of every other bar, you coincide with the downbeat. And Sting, for example, uses this as a musical device. Check out a tune called St. Augustine in Hell from the album 10 Summoners Tales. And there's, that's in, it's a piece that's in seven. The seven is kind of jarring, you know, every time you expect the downbeat to come a little later than it does, it kind of throws you when the downbeat shows up on an eighth note early. But in that tune, the bell of the drums goes straight through. So every other bar is coinciding with the downbeat of that bell. Every other bar in between is coinciding with the upbeat of that bell. And that creates a much more calming overall feeling. As you're learning this, go slow in the beginning and count eighth notes. I would recommend you start counting eighth notes. That will make it easier for you to feel it. And once you get a little bit of a handle on it, so for example, start practicing this at 120 for eighth notes, right? Six, seven. Versus when you practice it at half that speed, which is 61, you would feel so it's exactly the same speed, just the metronome is half uh, many clicks. Oh, five, six, seven. could do so when you practice it mark out where the beads fall right mark out where they're not i recommend you do that rather than me doing it for you because as you do it it's going to be very educational and also the chart is written in such a way that all the bars on the left will be downbeat oriented and the ones on the right will be upbeat oriented So as you're contemplating using chromatics for your own grooves, start here. Put a chord tone on the heavy beats. If you put a chord tone on a heavy beat, you're always gonna, your groove's always gonna sound like it makes sense, right? Because otherwise you would sound too random, right? But chromatics sound very pleasant because they have direction and they keep going to some place and you want that place they go to to make sense. Now you can also do the opposite and put a chromatic note on a heavy beat or downbeat, but then you have more of a sense of it resolving. So it has a bit of a different feel. So I recommend you try both. If we take a look at what the down beats, these heavy beats, da da ticka 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 ticka, just those, they are almost always chord tones. If I play just those notes, it sounds like this. Five, six, seven. 
five, six, seven. me just playing the heavy beats which kind of sounds funny because the metronome is doing every other beat right <laughs> but the heavy beats in the sense of where the accents lie in every single bar even though the click was going straight through and almost all of them are diatonic chord tones or diatonic scalar material um, i've included a little analysis so you can check that out but the line works because there is a nice mix of downbeat oriented notes that are part of the chord or the scale at least and notes that go a little bit outside of it for just a second but then it will resolve so that's what makes chromatic lines work now in terms of why I like bringing up chromatic lines in talking technique, it's because they are the direct application of our permutation exercises. They're in this book. We have done a few episodes on talking technique, but they are an endless reservoir of wonderful technique drills that will help you shed one finger per fret, that can help you find good basic technique. I've done several videos on all these topics, so you want to check them out here on No Treble. Because this line is kind of fast and very chromatic oriented, it's also a good drill to put your focus on keeping your fingers close to the fretboard. So you're gonna have a harder time playing this, you know, with your fingers. very far from the fretboard you will make way too much movement and it's going to be really hard to get into this kind of gentle flow that you want to get into with your left hand so you want to stay close ready to go and that will make that line a success for you all right enjoy here was a chromatic study in 7 8 find out more about our new offerings i do live classes now we got communities we got all sorts of cool stuff going on over at arispaceblog.com <laughs>